What's up everybody, it's me E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews and today we're going to review John Wick 3. Let's jump right into a quick intro. After breaking one of the sacred rules in the Continental Hotel, John Wick is now running for his little assassin life as every single assassin in the world is coming to collect that $14 million bounty that's been placed on his head. Enough of that, let's get right into the good. The good. John Wick 3 doesn't miss a moment of suspense picking up immediately after John Wick 2. The very first 20 minutes of the movie were incredibly suspenseful given the pressure of the looming countdown. If you've ever seen an episode of the TV show called 24, then this will feel pretty similar. To top it off, the film still throws in a couple of action sequences in spite of the countdown, which only serves as an appetizer for what's about to come next. It was simply a beautiful way to not only set the initial tone of the movie, but to also lock in audiences from the very get-go. Speaking of action, that is absolutely the bread and butter of this movie. The fight and action scenes in this film were taken to a whole new level. What I appreciated the most was that there was a consistent attempt to keep the fighting sequences practical. For example, you're not going to have a gun that normally carries only 12 rounds go on and shoot infinite bullets. You almost get this video game type of feel where characters have to scavenge and look for ammo and weapons. Furthermore, the characters weren't invincible compared to other action movies within the same genre. While this is still a movie, John Wick is still human and he has realistic injuries for the most part. I really love that level of attention. Along with the action, John Wick 3 borrows a little bit from John Wick 2 and builds on the humor. Within the fights themselves, you can definitely tell that the movie is not only taking itself less seriously, but it's also providing a lot of fan service as well. Wick can be shown going an extra mile to kill his enemies in such an exaggerated way that you simply can't help but laugh most times. The comedy doesn't stop with the fights either. The banter between the combatants is also pretty humorous, which again is more or the same from the previous film. Now one thing that was really helpful for the action scenes to really come alive was the great cinematography that was done. One of the standout scenes that caught my eye was the motorcycle scene. It was certainly a fast paced scene but having the camera set on another motorcycle during that sequence was a pretty effective way to keep audiences engaged. Having that close up view in the midst of the high speed chase continued to keep the high intensity going that the movie continued to deliver. As I mentioned before, while the action and fighting is definitely the bread and butter of this movie, another great component comes from the supporting cast and new character. I know that Keanu Reeves is the main actor, and he does a fine job for sure with the minimal lines that he has. However, I think the real standouts in terms of acting came from other actors such as Ian McShane, who played Winston for example. His performance was certainly humorous and delightful when we got a chance to get a little bit more insight on his relationship with Wick. Another solid character and performance came from Asia Kate Dillon, who played the adjudicator. She had a real commanding presence on screen, shrouded by a whole bunch of mystery. I was certainly intrigued whenever she was on screen, and her motives or actions didn't disappoint when they were finally revealed. I suppose, while I wasn't a major fan of Halle Berry's dramatic moments in the movie, I will give her a ton of credit for the great work that she put in during the fight choreography scenes. Now, I don't want to fall victim to uh, speciesism, so I want to take a moment and just give a huge shout out to the animals that were on set. The scenes with the horses were just a fun treat. However, the dogs in this movie were the real stars who could easily be said were to almost steal the show. The training staff who got these dogs prepped for the fight scenes need some recognition here too. The dogs were absolutely amazing and if it's possible, I certainly believe that they should be recognized in some capacity for Best Supporting Actor awards. And no, that's not up for debate. Those dogs were great. Lastly, I think the most intriguing and captivating aspect of John Wick 3 has to be like the rules within this assassin universe. 
The world building within the John Wick franchise has always been a major draw, in my opinion, that would lead fans to continue wanting to learn more. What I found to be the most fascinating is the strict adherence to the rules that bind all of the assassins and their respective groups. I think it is essential for any movie to clearly define how things work within their own little world or universe so that way audiences can remain invested in how the characters interact with those rules. John Wick 3 explored some of the deeper levels of the rules and the assassin network in such a way that it would almost come off as sort of a religious lore. My only concern is that John Wick 3 may have shown a little bit too much given the reveal of a certain character, but nevertheless, it doesn't make the movie any less enjoyable. Okay, let's get right to the bad. The bad. Now, like I mentioned before, one of the biggest aspects to this movie is going to come through the action and the fight choreography. However, because it's such an important essence to the movie itself, there is a certain issue within the fight choreography and the editing that I did have a problem with. Basically, I think the editing could have been a lot tighter. What ended up happening was that there were a number of scenes that felt more staged than authentic. This was more noticeable with the scenes that involved the main actors like Keanu Reeves or Halle Berry. The scenes in question would show a villain or a henchman, for example, patiently waiting to either be punched or shot. I think that could have been fixed by having closer editing done to hide some of that, but I also get it. The director has a desire to keep a longer flowing shot. Those types of long takes, especially in action sequences, feel so much more authentic and practical when they can be pulled off. At the same time, there's an inherent risk if the choreography isn't practically perfect during those scenes because they can momentarily take you out of the moment. I should note though, while this was a noticeable misstep in some scenes of the movie, it probably won't bother most people because it is a pretty minor issue. Even when I did notice some of this stuff, I got over it pretty quickly. It's not the biggest deal in the world, especially since the movie throws so much other good stuff at you. One other minor issue is that I wasn't a big fan of a certain scene or character in the movie. Obviously, I don't wanna spoil anything, but I'll just say that this scene made it feel like it went a little bit too high in the storytelling. I just think that it probably would have been a little cooler if they had left this certain situation or character to be more of a myth or something like that. It's just that there was a sense that it made things feel a little too easy for the sake of the story, even though there was a heavy price to be paid. Now, I'm pretty sure I've said enough and more than likely you'll know the scene when you get to it. OK, enough of that. Let's get right to the reason. The reason. John Wick 3 is a buffet of action that just leaves you wanting more. I think that the film has truly found its stride and knows where it wants to go. My main concern moving forward is that they're able to find a way to continue raising the stakes even higher while at the same time remaining grounded and practical. The absolute worst thing that this film franchise could do is become as ridiculous and unbelievable as the Fast and Furious franchise. And no, we do not need John Wick 8 in space. John Wick 3 did exactly what we'd hoped for a sequel to do, and that was to give us more of the same with a dash of something new. Now, if you were wondering where John Wick 3 ranks among this trilogy, I believe that I'd probably still have John Wick 2 as my personal favorite. Main reason is that John Wick 2 exceeded my expectations with the action and world building and it ended on an extremely suspenseful note. John Wick 3 feels more like a John Wick 2.5, except with a bunch more action and fight scenes. So when it comes to the rating for John Wick 3, I've got to give it an eight and a half out of 10. If you're a fan of the previous John Wick movies, I think you'll enjoy John Wick 3. Even though it's not really necessary, I would strongly recommend re-watching the previous John Wick films before seeing John Wick 3. Or at the very least, just re-watch part two. I just think it'll help you have a deeper appreciation for the world and the rules within the movie. I would also recommend watching this in a theater setting with other people, mainly to enjoy the comedic aspects of the film. If you're an action junkie like me, then John Wick 3 is gonna be an absolute treat for you. And I think it's very safe to say that John Wick 3 is probably going to be one of the best action movies of the year. So will you be checking out John Wick 3 in theaters? When you do get a chance to see it, come back to this video and let me know what you thought about it. 
I'd also like to know what is your favorite John Wick movie. Thank you so much for joining me today. You guys know I always appreciate you all taking the time to watch my videos. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.